When I say flume, what comes to mind? Maybe it's a human-made channel for water in the form of an open declined gravity chute whose walls are raved above the surrounding terrain in contrast to a trench or ditch. Or maybe, since you're watching this video on this channel, and since you've probably clicked this video to learn about drums, this guy comes to mind. Harley Stratton, or known in the biz as Flume. If you're familiar with this guy's music, you'll know he's a pioneer in the electronic music scene, consistently creating new sounds and styles that are inventive and unique. But if I asked you, what is the most important part of a Flume track? You might say, crazy sound design, iconic drops, things you've never ever heard before. But what if I made the argument that something else is the most important part? What if I said the most important part of a flume track is the drums? I know, there, there are so many elements that go into flume's music that it's kind of impossible to say that one thing is more important than the other. But I truly think that the one thing that consistently is there in his songs that elevates them to the next level are the drums. Whether the song is full of heavy basses and crazy sound design, or maybe it's more melodic and chill, the drums that Flume uses are always creative, always unique, and helping the track to come alive. To make a stupid analogy, the Flume drums to the Flume sound design is like Samwise Gamgee to Frodo Baggins, always there to pick him up and carry him up the mountain. But anyway, let's dive into some flume drums and try and figure out what makes these drums so uh. drumming. The first important step to creating a unique flume-like drum pattern is selecting the right samples. First up you gotta find good sounds. Uh, find samples, kinda of create you know, the perfect kick drum or create the perfect snare drum. Depending on the song you're making, the samples will differ. Let's look at some typical samples flume tends to use. For kicks, a punchy, slightly distorted trap kick is often used. You can also find beefier, more booming kicks. And on occasion, he will use big heavy kicks that are wide and create huge impact. For the snares, often we hear a sharp and aggressive snare. Flume also uses trappy claps and snares a lot. We then sometimes hear snares with lots of tone and character. Now for the miscellaneous elements that are thrown into his hugely diverse drum pattern collection. We will often find shakers. Hi hats and open hats. Then we get these random elements like big reverb claps, percussive things, and cymbals. Now that we have our samples, let's get into the arrangement. Yeah, just just honestly just dicking around. That's mostly what I do, just dicking around. And like, it doesn't always work, but when it does. So you heard the man, mostly just playing around, dicking around, as Flume himself said. So what I've gone down here is actually recreate some of the drum beats from some of his songs, just to sort of figure out how he arranges his drums. And so I'm gonna sort of show you how the, the basic drum loop is put together with the samples. Let's look at the drum beat for Never Be Like You. So that's a slightly older song from the album Skin, I think it's called, the pink one. So with this drum beat, I think I would describe this as very electronic-y. I mean, it's fitting a future bass song, but I think what Flume's gone for here is try to give a realistic vibe to it. Keep in mind, these are not the exact samples. I'm just recreating this off of sound, so these aren't perfect by any means. 
a key part of this is the shakers so if i zoom in here on the shakers they are off beat and there's a common thing you're going to find in flume's drum beats is something is going to be off beat in some way in this case it's the shakers then we have these percussive elements towards the end that really sort of acts as a transition i guess Now there's another bit in Never Be Like You that I found quite interesting. It's um, this little bit where he, he pitches up the kicks to create a sort of, I don't know, I don't know what you want to call it, but I mean, it's kind of cool. You can see that the, the drum beats are offbeat. It's a real sort of like drum focused section where the, the drums actually pitch up and create another sort of sound. All right, moving on to Helix. This is another one from the album of Skin. And again, this is a very electronic-y sort of future bass, hard-hitting drum beat. So this is at 145. simple but effective i would describe this one as very electronic -y, heady drum beat but then it sort of still is grounded to that flume style with these sort of percussive elements in there another thing i wanted to mention with my drums is the post-processing obviously sample selection is very important but also the post-processing is equally as important so what i've got on each of my drum patterns is diablo light a cool new plugin from cymatics this is just the free version. There is a paid version with a lot more features. What this plugin does is it just adds a lot of punch to your drums and just helps them to glue together and punch through in the mix super hard. It can really elevate your drum patterns to that next level. It's super easy to use. There's a punch knob and a clip knob. Just pull this up as much as you want. Give you a punchier attack, hardest kick, hardest snare. Hi-hats and shakers gonna cut through that bit more. Then we got the clip knob, which is just pushing the drums into a hard or soft clipper. This is super important for Flume drums. I'm sure Flume uses a drum compressor in some way. Maybe he's even using Diablo these days. Flume you should you should use diablo dude but it allows you to bring in heaps of different sounding samples that are sort of from different environments different sampling different sound design sessions and stick them together and make them feel as one and give them that same character in your mix yeah just help them become one and yeah it got really emotional moving on to friends and this is a newer song by flume 139 bpm this one's a bit more trappy sort of hip hoppy now an interesting part about this one is the shakers they are sort of on beat the hi-hats are actually about half a step off beat so the shakers on beat hi-hats off beat and that creates a nice swing to the drum beat which makes the drums i mean more original more sort of catchy and flowy in the song we also have these high-pitched sort of percussive trap snares in there acting as a little bit of ear candy i guess the little intricacies like those little percussive elements and the, the shakers hi-hats sort of being offbeat and sort of creating that swing really makes this unique and cool so the last one i've done here is 71 m3 and i think i've cracked the code i think it actually means time we'll go with that so in time we have a granular heavy bass heavy sort of track and it's actually really chill and the drum beat is very simple to match that so the most important part of this i think is the shakers and the hi-hats now you can see if i zoom in here nothing is on beat these are put in here to create as much swing as possible and really 
bring out their uniqueness from the drums. And these work pretty interestingly together. Now that almost sounds a bit off to, to your ear, it's sort of a bit, ugh, I don't know if it should be like that. But once you bring back the foundations, the kick and the snare that helps it stay within the beat, within the tempo, it really adds a lot of flavour. And there's another really important part to the time drums, and that is the addition of granular drums between the drum loops. There's instances of granular drums that act as a fill, act as sort of risers. So what I've done here is I've put in the drum loop that I just bounce out to audio. Now I ran this uh, drum beat through Quanta, which is a granular plugin. This is automating the grains number upwards. So this knob here, that's adding more granular audio and this is automating the source position so moving through the granular track it's hitting some hi-hats here and a snare before ending on the kick so i've actually done a, a different sort of automation here to change up the granular so if i run through the end of this drum loop and we'll transition into another fresh drum loop So that's just a cool little thing you can do with granular there and that's granulating a drum loop and using that as a sort of filler wherever you need a fill basically. So it's a cool tool to really spice up bits of your drum loop, be creative with it, be weird with it, as Flume would say. Just f***ing around. So there we have it, drums like Flume. Hopefully you've learned something. I know there's a lot I've probably missed because Flume's music is so dynamic, but now we have a starting point to elevate our drums to elite levels. I'm going to be posting all the drum loops and project files to my Patreon, so go over and support me there. And until next time. <laughs>